What if I told you NVIDIA's next generation release, the RTX 4000, possibly it may be here already. I'm not even talking about in the leaks that we saw recently with the different coolers and with the different specs. Possibly people are using it now. And I'm also not talking about NVIDIA engineers using it. I'm going to tell you exactly what I mean. And I think you're going to be as surprised as I was. And I'm going to lay out some foundations as why I think this is most likely going to be true. So first, what exactly am I talking about? The NVIDIA RTX 4000, the rumors literally just started. I mean, the first thing we've seen at all is a potential cooler, the RTX 4090. So that's not even released yet. Of course, somebody must have something, at least a cooler design. I'm not exactly talking about that. I'm talking about real usable GPUs that probably are going to be much like the RTX 4000. And I'm going to point to a GPU that's not very popular at all because of its pricing. Let's separate the price once and for all from this particular GPU so we can analyze it a little bit more objectively without having the lens of the market price and everything that's going around with the GPU shortage during the last year. This is going to be the RTX 3090 Ti. Now, 3090, that seems like a 3000 series GPU, doesn't it? Well, not so fast. There are a lot of interconnected mechanics and designs that take place from one generation to the next. Now, Lovelace is going to be the next generation, the RTX 4000, as we're thinking they're going to be called. And currently, we have Ampere. Before, people thought that Lovelace was going to be a simple sort of upgrade to Ampere, but of course it's probably going to be more complicated than that. As this tweet demonstrates, this person often gives out information that happens to be true over time. So yes, technically it's still Ampere. 3090 Ti is not really an RTX 4000 GPU in name, but let's go a little bit under the cover, if you will. Let's open it and see what's really going on with this particular GPU, at least theoretically. If you guys remember, this is one good example of how things can interconnect and also performance-wise and in people's minds. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is a fantastic way to master very complicated problem-solving skills in a not complicated manner, and it's actually really fun. If you ever wanted to improve your understanding of all of the STEM subjects, like math and science. For example, my favorite one is going to be computer science. What if you want to start your own piece of software, maybe even code your own game? It's going to intuitively teach you how to build the very fundamentals by doing it yourself in the way that's very interactive and very rewarding to do. They're going to teach you the importance of why everything is happening with a very intelligently designed structure that's not going to overwhelm you all at once with a lot of information. Think of this like a video game, like you're leveling up yourself and not just memorizing Memorize certain things that you eventually forget because I love actually learning by doing. That's going to be a big difference from just sitting at like a lecture hall or, or watching somebody do a presentation on a certain subject matter. And most importantly, it's going to give you an instant feedback loop so that way you know when you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Remember to check out the link below. First 200 subscribers to sign up are going to get a really nice 20% off. And at the end of your journey, you're going to come out mastering very important problem solving skills which are vital. In in the modern world. When the RTX 3070 first was announced, people immediately associated it with the 2080 Ti. Even though the 2080 Ti is a 20 series generation that was Turing, that was completely different than Ampere, but Nvidia themselves said that now you're going to get a 3070 for $499, pretty much matching the performance of the then $1,200 2080 Ti. If you guys remember the memes, so many people sold their 2080 Ti's for $500, and then months later, with the GPU shortage, those prices basically went right back up to the original MSRP. That was an entirely crazy situation, but that shows you how from one generation to another, the highest-end GPU kind of ended up being somewhere in that mid-range, the 3070, and really the 3070 does perform as well, sometimes better than a 2080 Ti, and that also shows you that the 2080 Ti was definitely Definitely a great GPU as well, as it can still keep up with many of the newer GPUs. So what's my point in bringing that up? 3090 Ti, I'm not saying it's going to be like an RTX 4070 necessarily, but let me now give you my arguments as why I think the RTX 3090 is basically a very early version. Um, NVIDIA are testing many different things, both technically as well as not only aesthetically, but as well as what certain things can handle with the 3090 Ti. View it as sort of a test run for the RTX 4000. Number one, this is the big one, power. 
The RTX 3090 Ti has a TDP of 450 watts, which is 100 more than the TDP of the RTX 3090. It doesn't necessarily perform a massive amount better than the 3090. In fact, in most games, it's maybe 5 to 10% better. If you do take advantage of NVIDIA's ray tracing and that type of technology, the percentage certainly will increase since, let's remember, the RTX 3090 Ti does have differences in terms of its specs from the RTX 3090. First, it's going to have faster GDDR6X VRAM. It's going to be the same amount, 24 gigabytes, but it's going to be faster. Not a huge amount, but a, you know, nearing one terabyte in terms of the speed. It also has more cores than the RTX 3090. And while the cooler is actually very, very similar to the RTX 3090, it does have a different uh, power connector with three 8-pin PCIe connections instead of just two that the RTX 3090 had. So as you can see, small incremental differences, but definitely a big jump in power. 100 watts is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, there are certain GPUs that just take 100 watts by themselves. So that's certainly a pretty big number. That indicates that NVIDIA is testing the limit of not only people's own own computers, but what they can actually do with the silicon having more power available to it. The biggest rumors that we see whirling around RTX 4000 is in the increased power draw. We've seen numbers as low as the 450 watts, which I think most likely the RTX 4090 should sort of come in at really around that range. We've seen other figures around 600 watts. Who knows, maybe that might be a special version of the 4090. I don't think the 4090 Ti would be coming out this early. NVIDIA usually staggers those releases, like they released the 1080, and then the 1080 Ti came after, 3080, 3080 Ti came after, so I think the same thing with the 3090, as we saw, you know, a long time after the 3090 Ti came out, we're probably not going to see a 4090 Ti. There were even some rumors of some GPUs with 48 gigabytes of VRAM coming in at around 900 watts. Those, most likely, or definitely, are going to be workstation-level GPUs, and not the gaming GPUs, so the ones that were more concerned with here most likely are going to be around that 3090 to 3090 Ti level. Completely realistic that a 4090 class GPU will have 450 watts, therefore making it 100 watts more than the existing 3090, which it sort of replaces, and pretty much putting it on par with the 3090 Ti. So that's going to be the biggest thing. Second, the 3090 Ti is really unlike the other Ampere GPUs that came before it. Specifically, of course, it's a little smaller brother, the 3090. They really changed a decent amount of stuff in the actual design of the GPU. The biggest complaint that people had with the RTX 3090, since it had its VRAM memory modules both on the top and the bottom of the PCB, people complained that it got way too hot. Um, of course, gamers experienced this, but cryptocurrency miners and people that use their GPUs for rendering saw this issue pop up even faster. While the GPU core temperatures generally would stay normal, wouldn't be that big of a deal, the VRAM temperatures on the 3090 often went to really close to 110 degrees, the junction temperature, which it starts to thermal throttle. You sort of degrade the quality of the GPU over time. It's definitely not a position that you want to be in. And of course, GDDR6X memory runs really, really hot. So people had this issue and they sort of fixed it on the 3090 Ti. In my experience, at least, the 3090 Ti that I have has run considerably cooler in terms of its VRAM. It can still get very, very hot if you don't have, you know, the proper airflow, but having the VRAM switched to the bottom in a different configuration of memory modules seems to have helped somewhat mitigate those issues with heat. And this appears to be some type of a testing ground for the 4090 because that more or less, most likely, judging especially from the coolers that we saw, will have that same type of configuration. So that's going to be another big thing, not to mention that in terms of the the, uh, VRAM that it's going to come with, the 4090, at least from what we know now, of course it can change, it's not definitive, the speculation is that it's going to be more or less very similar to the current 3090 Ti. Of course, it's probably going to use some higher grade chips, so it may perform a little bit better in real world use, but it's still 24 gigabytes of VRAM, most likely may not be any more on the 4090, I think that seems to be a pretty good number. It should be roughly about the same speed of VRAM and GDDR6X, not a new generation or anything like that. So 
once again, a considerable amount of similarities. Now, let's go to the third one, and this one is, I brought it up in the video before, and it's going to be the most obvious one. If the leak from the cooler is any indication, it's extremely similar to the RTX 3090 Ti. There are just a couple of minor differences in this particular cooler. I'm sure the color may be different on the Founders Edition. NVIDIA likes to change it. For example, 3060 Ti Founders Edition is lighter than the 3070 Founders Edition, even though they're pretty much similar in their design otherwise. So the 4090 cooler, if this is really an accurate leak, seems to be almost identical. A few small differences. I think it had like 24 fins as opposed to 23 fins on the 3090 Ti. But if it's around 450 watt TDP, and we're talking about the Founders Edition cooler here, it makes complete sense that they would use a very similar cooler. I mean, they spent a lot of money on R&D designing this cooler. The Founders Edition coolers this generation is unlike other coolers we've seen before. So those three things are some of the things that I think, at least seen some of the leaks that we've had so far, why the 3090 Ti specifically will likely be very similar to some of the RTX 4000 GPUs. Now, I don't think it's going to be close to the 4090, of course, in terms of performance, because as we know, performance typically has to go up. There are some rumors that say the 4090 should be twice as fast as the 3090. Um, I'm going to kind of disagree with saying it like that because rarely it ends up being true. Pretty much every single generation, the improvements generally are going to fall somewhere between 10, 15, 20 percent. Very rare you'll see such a massive improvement with the same sort of level of models like a 3090 and a 4090. Now, this is talking about traditional power and rasterization. If you're talking about ray tracing or something like that. Maybe the 4090 could have some special magic in its cores or, or different technology that does do certain things twice as good as the 3090. So you have to quantify that statement and say exactly what you're referring to. It's very possible it's twice as good at something, but we don't know if it's in general. You can't say it's twice as good sort of a, as a really blanket statement. All right, guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Let me know what you think. Is the 3090 Ti sort of a precursor to the RTX 4000 in more ways than one? Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys on the next video.